Underrated Whiskeys Part 1, starting with Stag Jr. Bam! Underrated! Underrated Whiskey Number 2, Kentucky Albatch 10. Right. Garbage. Yeah. It's no, underrated, that's though. That's what underrated means. It's it's under so not, so not like not rated. It's just underrated. Like, Georgia's overrated right now. We're talking about underrated whiskey. Like, it's the opposite Have you of that. seen... That's... All right! We set out on a journey for today's little snippet video. Tell them what we got to do there, Will. I don't, what, I don't like what, what you said, so we're going to start that over. The snippet. The snippet. <laughs> stupid. Is it really? Yeah. I don't even know what it means. It's, it's snippet, but... No, but snippet. It's like schnapps and, and ip it together. No. Snippet. Not good. What's up, everybody? We are coming together for another video this week. We Will, have a list. It's not a. Li it's not it a, list. a list. Let, let me go ahead and say something. It's multiple it's, things. It's not top order. It's, it's not top five. It's not a top list. Right. It's just a list of some I things. I mean, it's kind of top, but not top. It should be the top. What are we doing today, Will? Grease, we are doing. Underrated whiskeys. We're going to give you four of them. And what kind of sparked this concept was a lot of people talk about on like the the social media platforms. Like, not today. Rare, rare breed. Facebook was down. Well, you just dated the video. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That not not that's not going to age well. I knew you were going to say that. Right. So we're doing four. So we're going to give you four underrated whiskeys today. And what kind of sparked this is a lot of people on social media, they talk about like, oh, rare breeds underrated or wild turkey 101's underrated. Right. When And I saw like a meme, someone was like, oh, of course. everybody ever. They're not underrated because everyone loves them. They're There's actually rated. Good amount of supply. You're saying they're not underrated because they're actually rated. Well, I just they're mean coveted. people appreciate them. I feel like that it, it, those are whiskeys that a lot of people buy and enjoy, especially within our community. So right. we thought... What are some whiskeys that we never hear about, but we do like to drink and maybe should get a little bit more love, thus being underrated. Right, which is not not rated. Right. Right. I, you're sticking on this line, and I still don't think you know what <laughs> like underrated means, but I, that's fine. Well, this isn't a rating system. Underrated system. sounds like a negative. But it's actually well, a positive. Well, it just means that this is something you can probably go buy, and not a lot of people are talking about it, but it's a quality whiskey, and it's probably worth the price you're going to pay. Two negatives times each other is a positive. That's what I'm trying to do. You're it's fixating not, on the wrong rated. portion. Well, let's just kick it off with the first whiskey, Will. What do we got? Well, one thing that we actually started talking about a lot more recently, after finally reviewing it on our podcast. Right. Oh, yeah. Solid pour. This, this is underrated. If, it's definitely underrated. If you people out there are like, oh, maybe whatever. Like, it's bountiful. This it's plentiful. Okay, so, by the way, the Makers 46 stave is in the staves that you can choose for the cast strength single barrel select that right. are in stores. Right. Now, they have a regular version of this. They have a cast strength version of this. I, I this love is regular. both, but this one is going to be found at just about any liquor store you go into. This was like the first uh, non-standard Maker's Mark release in like ages. Like Maker's Mark didn't have a, a ton of, of releases. They had right. just Maker's Mark. And then it was uh, in like the late uh, 2000, before 2010, so that first early aught era they introduced <laughs> makers 46 and i feel like you have to over explain for me yeah that's typically what i'm doing i'm like most people except understood you what use the doing. word ought and yeah, i don't know i know and i was means. like that was so this though it's 94 proof it's barrel finished with 10 french oak staves and i'm gonna tell you it's delicious yeah it's so good and it's about 30 bucks and it's gonna be on the shelf at any store it's sweet you go into it's complex it's low proof, but still has a freaking ton of flavor. Yeah. Like, it's freaking great. A it's lot high, of It's higher proof than standard Maker's Mark. Right. And if you're looking for a weeded bourbon that's not just run-of-the-mill Maker's or, like, Rebel Yell that you can find on the shelf, this is something that's really good and it has those sweet profile notes that you really like. Sidebar, do you know that I owned a handle of the 87 and a half proof? I know that. I feel like that would be pretty valuable right now. Nah. Meh. Nah. 
this is great. Underrated, not not rated. I don't think you understand what we're no, talking I, about. No, I, I, next up, Grease, what do we got? Uh, we have uh, something very nice. This is, a lot of people love the cask, the barrel proof strength of this offering. It is, it's, it's tearing up, it's tearing up the whiskey verse right now. Right. A lot of people are into it, but what they don't know is that the lower proof version is also good. Right. And way easier to come across and the value is great. The taste is freaking money. This is Jack Daniels single barrel. But this is 94 proof. Also 94 proof. So the Maker's 46, 94 proof. This is 94 proof. You're sensing a, a theme. They're not all 94 proof. But we've got them here today. And like Grease was saying, it's a really popular whiskey right now is the barrel strength single barrel Jack Daniels, which you can get from store pick versions. You can things like that. But what we also really like, and I drink quite often, is the single barrel of the Jack Daniels. You can get barrel selects of it. You can also just go to a store and pick up a single barrel version of this in just about any liquor store. 40, 45 bucks to get one of these in really good whiskey. And we're big fans of it. And we don't think that it's talked about enough. Hence being underrated. Not, not rated. And two. <laughs> Keep saying not, not rated. That's not what we're saying. No, but it's rated. That's what I'm saying. It's rated. No, no, if it's you're not, missing the point. not rated. Yeah. No. I'm pretty sure that it means. Underrated does not mean not, not rated. <laughs> that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. All right. We took a pause. We had to arm wrestle a little bit, and we're fine. We're good to go. We have another underrated whiskey, Will. What's the underrated whiskey? Yeah, so this is one that I really like. I really enjoy drinking, and I just feel like we don't talk about it enough, and it's available on shelves just about anywhere you go, which is odd because we talk a lot. So this is uh, something that was highly sought after when there was a single barrel program. A lot of people were getting the cast drink single barrel. They were age stated and they were loved. They were really good. And the value of those single barrels were being flipped for quite a lot of money. Then because of stock issues and constraints with sourcing that MGP bourbon, they came out with a more batched higher proof version of Bell Mead. This is Bell Mead Reserve Bourbon. And so it's a standardized proof. It's 108.3 proof and it's real good. It's still MGP juice. Are they They're, all a 108.3 or are there some variations? I believe some of them earlier may have been a little bit different, but yeah. to, as far as I know, they are all standard at 108.3 proof. Uh, and it, it's really good. So it's a, it's a step up from just the regular Bell Mead. It's not the 90 proof that you can get, but it is closer to cast strength, but it's batched instead of being a single barrel. And this is gonna run you about $59 to get a higher proof uh, aged. It's got good color on it. It doesn't have an age statement, but it is uh, older age stocks of MGP bourbon. So it's distilled in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, and it is bottled by Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery in Nashville, Tennessee. So. I love it. I think it's a great bottle. It's it's a little bit more spendy than some of the others on this list. But if you're looking for some really quality, higher proof MGP bourbon, it's available. It's going to be on the shelf and it's not going to be something at 90 proof like you can find in some other uh, sourced bourbons. So I really like it. I don't think it's talked about enough. And I think part of that is not because of the lack of quality here, but because people loved that single barrel program so much oh, yeah. that when it kind of tapered off because of stocks, they were a little bit turned off to it, but that doesn't take away from how good th this bottle is. I agree. Underrated. All right, Grease, what is our final of this video? Yeah. Underrated whiskey. Yeah, have you heard of Rare Breed Rye? I have heard of rear. Have you heard rye. of Kentucky Owl Rye? Yeah, these are ryes. Have you heard of Wild Turkey 101 Rye? Yeah, I have. Have you heard of Jack Daniels Rye? I have. I like to drink it. A lot of people talk about that. Well, this is another rye, Will, oh. but it's underrated. It's underrated why, Grease? Because it's not... Not rated. No, that's not what that means. It just means that it's not something that you see a lot of people drinking or talking about very often. So right. we see it as something that has some quality to it. 
may be worth picking up. The price isn't going to be crazy. It's not going to, it's going to be on a shelf somewhere. And that's why we think it's underrated. It's underrated. This is Jim Beam Rye. Yeah. We've Jim never Beam talked Rye. about this on the we've show. Before. I don't even think it, now it's, it's younger. It's a straight rye. So we know at least it's four years because there's not an age statement on here. It says rye pre prohibition style. Yeah. Whatever that means. But this is about a $20 bottle of rye yes. whiskey, a yes. straight rye, 90 proof, distilled by the Jim Beam Company. Now, one of the best values and rated rye is Rittenhouse rye. We love Rittenhouse. It's, 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 it's not overrated. It's just rated. This is great. This is good. This, this, this will. Yeah. And, and you know what? It, it's, it's a 90 proof rye. It's, it's that younger age. Clearly this is not like an eight or nine year rye. Right. But for 20 bucks, 23 bucks after tax, maybe yeah. it's a solid pour that no one's talking about that you can walk in and get. Sometimes it's hard to find things like Rittenhouse because people talk about them so much and say right. it's really good. There are things on the shelf that you can go buy right now that aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg and you're going to enjoy. You could make a cocktail with this or you could drink it neat and you're not going to be disappointed. And that's why it's underrated. I like my old fashions actually made with rye. A rye old fashioned. Yeah. Solid choice. Solid right choice here. here. So, you're, it, it's, this throw is, that in some Eli Mason. This, Perfect. this will make you... 12 old fashions for $20. Yep. So that concludes our four underrated whiskeys this week. We're going to come back of these later because we think that one thing we can do for you is tell you about some whiskeys you may not have heard of that are actually really good that you're probably going to be able to find. You don't have to always be chasing something next level or hard to get or allocated because there's plenty of really good whiskey on the shelf if you just know what to go look for. Folks, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do it. Give it a thumbs up on this video. Ring the bell so you get notifications. And you can support us at patreon.com slash the podcast. <laughs>